Hello and thank you for joining us on the Monday edition of Journalist Hangout. This week, I'm Ayodili Uzubahun. Today on the program, at last, Governor Ganduje dethrones Sanusi as Emir of Kano. And later on the show, governors move to save Oshomole as Deputy National Secretary insists he remains suspended. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Koladi Utitoju and Wale Adewe. If you are ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for joining us again. Now, feed can lead to two outcomes. A reconciliation between the warring parties or outright breakdown of relations. After a long-running investigation by the Kano State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission over allegations, fraud and disrespect, Governor Abdullah Ganduje has dethroned Mohamed Sanusi as the Emir of Kano. The Secretary to the State Government, Usman Alaji, announced the removal Babajide saw this coming as far back as 2017 when the issue of Sanusi's probe came up for discussion on the program. Let's share with you. The army of Kano being harassed had nothing to do with all that he has said about poverty level, education and all that. But the direct attack on the governor of his state, because whether he likes it or not, as the, as the emir, he is a staff of the state government. And for Kwankwaso, I mean for Ganduje's uh, minders, they were particularly taken aback. <clears throat> and don't forget that it was Ganduje's predecessor that installed him as emir, against the wish of the kingmakers, because the kingmakers had, had nominated, I mean, appointed Nasiru Adobairo as emir. He didn't win the contest. It was in fact, he had congratulated the winner. So if you turn against him, he is probably, and we all know that Kwankwazo and Ganduje are not the best of friends at this time. He is probably going to think, oh, he's not loyal to me because this was the person that installed him. The whole intention is to kick him away. Now, because of some of his comments that the, the even the clerics do not like, you know, a cleric, was recently even arrested for abu publicly abusing the Emir of Kano. It's a reality for anyone to abuse an Emir in the north. Now, from that situation that if this man were to be kicked away, it's not likely that people would take to the streets. Remember, he couldn't even get into his palace for a long time because the people were not going to let him get inside mm. because he was not the, lo I mean, the, the person that won the throne. So that's, that's by the side. So now people like Hamino Dantata, um, Dangote, um, Oshiba Joe, governors and others who stepped in, they knew where this thing was headed. That if they didn't step in, it could be indicted and it could be dethroned. We've seen even a bigger traditional ruler than an enemy of Kano dethroned in northern Nigeria and nothing happened. They didn't even protest. The sultan was chased away by a badger. Nothing happened. You must know the battles mm -hmm. to, to fight. To, yeah. to fight. Mm -hmm. You can't take on your governor as a traditional ruler. You can't take on your governor. If you do that, they will keep you away. Adam Lero, as civilian, as a civilian governor, removed Mustafa Jokolo. Mustafa Jokolo was Babangida said this. I mean, uh, Buhari said this. He, he chased him away. You know, they, and they banished him. Uh, you remove the Masemi of Gwandu mm. as it is to put the down your government. You know, that, 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 that is what is wrong. Mm. Before now, he had been attacking some of the cultures of the North that he felt uh, needed uh, uh, to, to be changed. But they didn't, uh, they didn't move against him until he took on his own governor. Mm. So that's why I said, look, it, it, it made sense. It made sense in saying some of those things. But you can't fight everyone. You must choose your battles carefully. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you will be you you will be kicked out of your throne. And the same people goading you and telling you to speak all the time because they are enjoying no, what no, you are saying. You, you they, they will merely have pity for you at the end of the <laughs> day. does not need anybody to we go. We must go on a break, <laughs> gentlemen. Okay, so he, 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 he goes himself. We'll take another break. At the 2017. That's three years ago. 
three years ago now, almost three years ago, our own in-house Nostradamus actually saw this coming. I remember that particular, we had one other edition and um, I'm sure our producer will give us one other, some other time to show it and uh, Babajide said, said it emphatically that if Sanusi Lamido Sanusi continues the way he was towing, it's going to be deposed and nothing will happen and people should not expect any backlash against the Kano state governor. Today, three years after, it's March, three years after, you said it's when this crisis started and we advised Sanusi Lamido Sanusi on this program that you should tow the part of peace, peace and there's no how you can take on your governor, that it's not possible, that at the end of the day, it's going to be costly. From what's, from all indication, we gathered before I entered the studio that has been um, banished to they're on their way to Nasara states. That um, I miss tight security. That's going to be under house arrest. Babajide, how did you get to this place? Yes, you, you see, the governor of Kano respected the Emir so much because whether we like it or not, Yanuji is a gentleman. But even the most gentle of men will refuse to take certain insults. Even the most gentle of men will refuse to be lied against. This whole problem began in Kaduna when the middle pass Emir of Kano was addressing governors and other big people. And he accused Ganduje and his team of traveling to China, chasing elusive investors, and of spending one whole month in China. Unfortunately for him, Ganduje spent just two days in China. Some of his aides spent about four days, some three days. But he accused the Speaker of the House then and the governor of spending one whole month. So they had something with which they could really fight him. Because if I spent two days, you are trying to make the argument that I went on a jamboree mm. and I merely spent two days, and you claim that I spent a whole month. You have offended me. Big exaggeration. Yes, you have offended me. Now, Kano State was in the um, process of doing a similar project in Lagos, a light ray project. He dismissed it that it was a white elephant. Not many governors will sit idly by and watch an emir dress them down. No. There's no governor who, who, who just simply watch. Because, because of their influence, they know that whatever they say, People believe, people trust uh, them, they respect them so much. So that's not the sort of person that you don't want to have on your side. So when you have a, uh, someone that influential seemingly against you, yeah, then you start asking what's going on. And there were moves to really reconcile both men. The, governors, uh, the governor of Kaduna broke out a meeting where uh, former Zamfara governor Yari and others were in attendance. And at that meeting, at that meeting, the uh, governor of Kano explained how he used to show respect to him, that even uh, event for which he needed to come to the government house, he would say, no, you don't need to come, I'll come and meet you. You are my king. And he will go all the way to meet him. Sometimes too, when the emir comes, to, to see him in government house, he will uh, accompany him straight to his car. That's a mark of humility by a governor. But in spite of that, he said, look at the way you've treated me. And you are not the only person who is educated. You don't even have a doctorate. I have a doctorate. My wife has a doctorate. Two of my children has doctorates. The rest of them... That's Abdullah Ganduji. Yes, Abdullah Ganduji. Saying in anger, saying all of this, and saying that the rest of them have masters, minimum masters among his children. And his doctorate is not honorary. The wife is, uh, is an academic as well. So that why do you feel the need to always talk down on 
all of us. So they tried to calm things down between them, but I think that the last elections, a lot of them were convinced that the MEA worked against them. If you remember on the night of that mm. election, mm. Um, some supporters of Gaduje stormed mm. the government house mm. and were removing mm. the MEA's. Mm. Uh, I was in Canada that time. Yes, yes, they were removing, they were removing the MEA's pictures mm. in the government <coughs> because there were pictures circulating showing the EMEA and Kwankoso and all that. And there were also unverified claims yes. that the EMEA actually even told people close to him and his friends that they should go and vote for Abba Gida Gida, who was Kwankoso's candidate. You know? So it wasn't things. So just as he said to those governors that, look, we are not politicians. I mean, you are not a politician. We are politicians. We can't take being talked down upon the way you are doing. If you want to join us, then remove your turban and become a politician like us. I, Wale, I, I want to, it, it might be unfair, but I want to do a kind of comparative analysis between um, the Emir of Kano and the Sultan of Sokoto. Do you understand? The way the Sultan of Sokoto carries himself and, you know, as like a father figure, a um, uh, spiritual leader of the uh, Muslim in Nigeria, religious, religious leader, and you know the way it is. It he hardly talks, yeah. and when he talk, he doesn't go into partisan politics, mm -hmm. and he's not somebody that we dress any government of the day, bring any government of the day down. But uh, so much unlike Sanusi Lamido Samusi. Well, I think of all the. MIs in the north. I can't recollect anyone um, in recent memory or over history that has taken politics as his own um, duty. Political traditional institutions are subservient to political authorities. The Nigerian constitution uh, gives the governors the power to remove MIs or any other. And if you look at the Sultan of Sokoto, of course he makes uh, statements that are on economic or political issues. But such statements are not directed at individuals. You know, they are made generally you know, to reflect the mood of the nation and all about, not in a partisan and in a, in a parochial way that chooses to attack the personality of the state governor, for instance, of uh, Sokoto State. But in this case, I think, uh, ceaselessly, the former Emma of Kano, two former, he, he made, made it an, an habit, a perpetual habit, to attack the state governor, to rubbish his policies. Well, the fact of the matter is that MIs are custodians of traditions and values. They have the right to complain about the feelings of their own people. But there must be, you know, um, a cultured way of passing across your messages. Not to go on the pages of newspapers, on radio, because when you do that, you portray yourself as an authentic political figure, you know, as an opposition figure that is out to ensure the end of the person in power. And I don't think there's any government that will take that. So I think uh, it appears to me that he overstepped his bonds. And there were several opportunities you know, over the past five years, you know, people making suggestions to him, trying to caution him, but each time such steps are made, the next day, the MI is out, you know, attacking, you know, the governor of the state. I think uh, this end is predictable, just as uh, Baba Gide said it. You know, there was no way things would have uh, continued to go uh, in that tour without an end to the conflict between him and the state governor. And I hope this may serve as a lesson that when you take this kind of traditional institution, which is a very rare opportunity, it's a position that you hold on forever. Only death can take away from you. So it's a, it's a privilege mm -hmm. because there are so many people that are qualified. So people must know how they manage this kind of sensitive position. Once you take political uh, positions and begin to make sensitive statements, you must be prepared for the consequences. Okay. Baba Jire, I, I want to a brief about the person Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. 
in his days as the governor of CBN, yeah. if you remember his running battle with, with uh, the government of the day that time, mm -hmm. even with the National Assembly at that time, before how he emerged as the Emir got to this throne, and ever since he got to the throne, how he has been having a running battle with even the clerics, yeah. Islamic clerics. Yes, um, no doubt about it, he's a revolutionary. He's a um, uh, good thinker. He's, he's forward-looking. Brilliant. I will give that to him. That, um, he wants the best for, for the North. I agree with him that some of the practices in the North that he complained about needed to be changed. Um, he, he, he worked hard to preach the need for the education of the girl child in the North, instead of simply marrying them off at too, um, marry them off too young. He also didn't see the need for people who are not solvent enough to be marrying out to four or five wives that they can't take care of. These were things that he said publicly. Yeah. But you see, in a very conservative society, when you say to the women that if your husband slaps you, slap him back, there's no way that clerics will not be up in arms against you. Sanusi told women that they should stand up to their husbands, that if your husband slaps you, you should slap the man back. He said it publicly. And many of them were like, ah, for someone who occupies that throne, these are not the kind of Strange doctrine. vibes mm -hmm. that should be coming from him. You know, there was also an occasion when he sent his daughter, daughter to remember. represent him. Yes, without even event. going to instead of Instead of mm -hmm. Uh, getting one of his district heads to go and represent him, you sent your daughter, and your daughter was not appropriately dressed, you know. So the clerics were angry. In, in, in northern Nigeria, as we are taking care of political figures, political leaders, the clerics too, you must take good care of them because they can determine whether you win or you don't win. Especially in very conservative northern states. So many of those clerics were already grumbling that they don't like some of his utterances, some of his um, 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 methods. So definitely for some of those clerics, whatever happens to him, they can't be bothered. You know, before his, his emergence, he was suspended by good Lord Jonathan and uh, he, he knew that the suspension was not going to be lifted. So he had excused himself that he did not want a second term as CBN governor. Mm. I think that uh, he had achieved what he wanted, you know, to reform the uh, sector. Mm. And it had and always he been his dream to be the, this emir. Yes, he had always wanted to be emir. But he didn't have the temperament, mm. the maturity for this tool. Look at someone like the, M the former Emir of Kano, Adoba Ero. All through my years in Kano, and I covered the palace, his best friend, his best friend from, the, from America that I knew was the, uh, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Mm. Jesse Jackson will come into Kano, and you will not hear the Emir speak a word of English. Mm. He, wa he was just a cultural icon. You will never, you will never ask any journalist who, who practice in Kano that you hear the Emir of Kano, uh, later Dobairo, open his mouth and speak English in public. In his palace, no way. In public functions, no way. Because he, he stood to defend that culture. And he really spoke. And he was so well respected. But in the case of uh, um, uh, Sanusi, they were inviting him to give talks here and there. There was a particular, I think just before the last election, he said something that integrity, 
there is a limit to which integrity can take you. That if you do, if you have integrity and you don't have capacity. capacity. Mm. So people right there, Fetty was talking to Mr. Mr. President. Mr. President. There is no way that uh, Ganduje can take this kind of decision without the president hmm. being That's an like angle to it. Because this is a big emir. And if, if the thing should degenerate that. into um, real bedlam, it's still the federal authorities who control the forces of coercion who will be needed to quell things. So there's no way a Ganduje will take this kind of action without the president being informed. So this is the thing. So in a way, he had also offended those ones too by his constant criticism of their economic policies and all that. Yes, um, he, he spoke the truth. But what we are saying, our people, the kind of truth that mm. he spoke to our people, mm. they don't like that kind of truth. And when you are an well, you know, you <laughs> when you are an emir, you are not a journalist <clears throat> like us who can say these things mm. and... Uh, uh, even many journalists can say some of the things yeah. that we say. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. So the thing many is, of our colleagues cannot even attend this program yeah, because of interest. Yes, yes. interest. Yeah. I know they have interest. We try to bring them. They say no. I don't want yes. to come. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to offend anybody. So yeah. this is the thing. Sometimes they ask, "How do you do it? Huh? Don't they put pressure on you? Are you not afraid for your life?" As an emir, you you can't do that though because they will wait for you. Okay. Olawale is calling us from Lagos. Thank you for joining us, Wale. Uh, good evening, uh, Ayo. Good evening, Wale. My encyclopedia. Good evening. I agree with you, sir. Yeah. You see, the position is quite unfortunate that a brilliant Zanussi, Zanuto Zanussi, the former uh, CTN governor and managing director of Fed Bank, will end up this way. You see, he is so much uh, in love with the police race, I mean the poor people. Once upon a time, he said that if by act of omission of commission, Nigeria divide that the North East and North West, we are we have the ponderance of poor people, they will be the one to suffer. But he will not close his eyes to the suffering of the people in society not that vice. But as a refined uh, Oba or Emma, I mean, he should have constrained himself. He was, he, 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 he cannot be speaking. I don't expect all new people or other people of Oyo, they see a lot of injustice in, this, in Oyo states and Oshun states, but they don't talk. So this will teach the uh, image lesson, but it's quite unfortunate that. Uh, 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 Wally, the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Get yeah. wisdom. In all that gets is get understanding. And when, he, yes, he's intelligent. He has everything it takes, but he could not manage that story with wisdom. Yeah, he, and I think he should have also learned from history. Because this same thing happened in 1963 to his grandfather mm -hmm. that had a running battle with mm -hmm. the you know, Sardana of Sokoto yes. at that time. And he was removed in 1963 and banned to Azari. So he was just two years old there. So he should have known that, you know, there is a, I mean, reference point in history that when you have people that are constituted politically, you need to take your time as an MI when you relate with them. And should not constitute yourself as the opposition figure. Hmm. Now, uh, Baba Jide, we're, we're trying to look at his, uh, the man, the, the trajectory of Lamidu. <laughs> there was yeah. a time <laughs> he, when he was a CBN governor. He went to the National Assembly and he, t uh, he confronted them to say, look, there's a possible percentage that you guys, yes. you take, you are, the, you are the problem of this nation. Yes, uh, he, said, he said that um, that they were gulping 25% of the budget of our nation. Clearly, his aides gave him that figure and he didn't bother to investigate. Mm. There's no way the National Assembly can spend 25% of Nigeria's budget. And when he said that, many people believed. So at that time, the chairman of the Senate Committee on Finance was um, uh, McCarthy. Yes, Cardinal. Uh, yes. Ahmed Mohamed McCarthy. So Ahmed Mohamed McCarthy confronted him. He had to write um, a, a letter apologizing 
for the 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 embarrassment that it caused the Senate and the apparent exaggeration because even in today's world the quant the, the percentage of our budget that the National Assembly spends now is higher now than that time. Mm. Yet they do not spend twenty five percent of our budget. They don't even spend the budget of uh, uh, how many three six uh, point six yes. seven trillion. And so they do they have the they don't spend the billion. They don't spend mm -hmm. the I don't the, mm -hmm. the two houses combined mm. now. They don't even spend up to four hundred billion. So how can you say that the That's the, five percent? Uh, so he apologized, he knew that he was wrong, mm -hmm. and then he apologized. You see, then he felt Jonathan decided to to suspend him because Jonathan accused him of not assisting the administration in any way. Remember when he went to say that um, the National Assembly, that uh, the government, that 48 billion, 48 billion was missing. Mm. And then yes. when he was confronted by Okonjo Iweala, he saw clearly that he could not defend the, the, the claim that 48 billion was missing. It was shrinking. Yes. <laughs> so later on, he, he now said, oh, it was actually 20 billion. But even when Cooper came, to investigate that, the only claim that 1.2 billion was unaccounted for, there is nowhere, nowhere mm. that it was discovered that as much as 20 billion was was uh, billion dollars yes, was, was stolen. No, <laughs> of course that was another exaggeration. So, <laughs> in his life, he made mistakes. Now, people like Jonathan can find a way to forgive because even when Jonathan decided to remove him, you know what happened. John, he was in the same room with Gulo Jonathan. And Gulotan was complaining about some of what he was doing. But the next day, hmm. one of the major newspapers published everything that they said. Jonathan now confronted that, but there was nobody with us in the room. How come this newspaper had all of these stories? Hmm. So it was clear that they could no longer work together. But after he became MBA, <laughs> and um, it was clear, he, he, his passport was seized. He couldn't go to Jonathan. He had to beg the Sultan of Sokoto. So they both went to Aso Rock to break fast. That was the first time since he became here that they would see face to face himself and Jonathan. He then pleaded with Jonathan that he had a request that they should re release his passport and that the, the, the prison in Kano, which is in Gorondusse, to be relocated. So those were the two requests that he made, you know. And Jonathan said, well, they will do their best. Jonathan ordered the release of his passport and he said he would do his best to relocate the, um, the, prison. the prison. Understand that Buhari has built a new prison in Kano. Well, <laughs> still to come, governors move to save Oshomole as Deputy National Secretary insists he remains suspended. We'll be right back after this breather. Please stay with us. Thank you for joining us. This is Journalist Hangouts. And Wally, when you, okay, let's uh, do a kind of uh, recollection of those people that have been um, deposed before. Let's look at the uh, Sultan of um, Sokoto, that's Ibrahim Dasuke. Well, that was in 1996. Um, yes, he was removed by the military regime of uh, Sonia Abacha. And uh, he never made it back mm. until he died, I think, some few years ago. Mm. And uh, we also have a case in 1963 that the grandfather of the current, um, of the former Emma of Kano, mm. this yes, Muhammad Sanusi, yes. 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 His, grandfather. his grandfather was deposed and banished to Azari. Mm. At that time, he was having a running battle with the premier of northern Nigeria. Mm. And uh, he hosted the queen. When the queen visited, he was one of the most influential MIs. Mm. But he also overstepped his bond by delving into, you know, uh, politics. We also have the case of uh, the Emma of Gwando, mm. you know, who was Jakolo, who was also removed. And it, I think in 2005. Mm. And he had to go to court, I think a, a high court in Kebi, you know, that he should be reinstated. Mm. But up to now, mm. he's still around the battle. And I don't think getting, I don't think you will probably get that uh, through again. Mm. So I think uh, in the case of the current and uh, the former Emma of Kano, I don't see him returning to that seat. Mm. Uh, it will take 
in fact, the grace of Almighty. Because as soon as a new person is announced, mm -hmm. you know, I think that is the end. Yeah. But we must also understand the feelings of the state governors. Anema is a very powerful institution. If you allow him to continue to rubbish a governor, to you know, mobilize the mass against him, you could get to a peak that he might actually mobilize people to, you know, to, oh, to, 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 to overthrow the government, either mm. through mass rally, because they are very influential. Mm. They are the custodians of, uh, you know, Islamic institution, the custodians of Aegean tradition. So they have a lot of influence of the masses. So when they begin to make popular statements like that, they might get to a stage that they can, you know, lead an uprising against uh, the authority, you know, that is uh, in, in place. So I think I don't see the Emma of uh, the former Emma of Kano coming back to that truth. I think it's a it's a very unfortunate end because he granted several interviews saying that his dream after leaving the CDM position was to be his childhood dream was to be the yeah. Emma of Kano. That was even a day that, that uh, yeah. war the Toban, yeah. Toban as the governor of Syria. Yes. He had a very unique opportunity, but he didn't know how to manage that success. Yes. And I think he had a lot of opportunity to make amends, mm -hmm. but he, you know, he, he messed up the whole, uh, you know, the, the whole chance given to him. So it's very unfortunate that we may not have to be referring to him in the past tense. Hmm. Well, actually, this, the implication of this, of the removal of Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, this would have altered his life for the rest of his yes, life. And, uh, it's a turning point in his life. It, uh, we, you see, his talk will go down, no hmm. doubt about it. Even those who used to invite him up and down for to, to give talks, they won't be inviting him like before again. Don't for, also forget that they don't want, once he's banished, they don't want to see him moving around like before. Yeah. So his, his freedom will be curtailed. He's most likely to be, likely to be placed under house arrest. His house will be surrounded. They are the ones who will determine where they will put him, the house where they will put him. They will put him. He can't go anywhere he likes. He, will, he probably would not be allowed to travel abroad. Mm. You know all of those things. So his, his, his movement will be curtailed. And then when you look at Kano, there has been serious... Uh, that means he cannot go back to Kano again. No, till he dies. He cannot enter Kano again. That's, when you are banished, you can't go back to that place again because they believe that if you go back, you will make life difficult for the new Emir, mm. and they don't want to see that happen. So, and then, remember that he deposed Sanusi, Alaji Sanusi, the, the district head of Bichi, mm -hmm. you know? Sanusi was the, old, I mean, the oldest of the Adoba Ero children. So, the rivalry between them and, and the Galadima Abbasi's family, you know, it has now led to the defeat of uh, one of the contending groups. So now I believe that history will repeat itself. Mm. The, uh, the, the government will allow one of the Adobahero children, mm. uh, either Amenu mm. or Nasiru Adobahero, to become the next Emir. Because, like Amenu Adobahero, was well loved by the young people, loved by the kingmakers, you know, and he won. The, the, uh, the contest then, yeah. only for, uh, even after he, um, Sanusi had congratulated him, only for powerful people to come and then convince Kwan Kwaso to, hmm. to... I have, I have Ibrahim from Damaturu. Thank you for joining us, Ibrahim. Hello? Ibrahim? Okay, Ibrahim is... You know, only for powerful people to get Kwan Kwaso to replace the choice of the kingmakers. And the people of Kano re revolted. Houses were burnt. He couldn't even go into his palace for he a long time. He was staying in the government house for yes, some time. Yes. So this is the thing. That was similar to what happened in Sokoto. So time, Muhammad Machido was the choice of the kingmakers. Babangida ensured that he put Ibrahim Dasuki there, you know, against the wish of the kingmakers. But when uh, Abacha dethroned Ibrahim Dasuki. Hmm. Uh, it was the same Machido that um, they, they now uh, put in office, knowing that by doing that, the people will be happy. So uh, once you now choose the, a, a popular person hmm. to replace someone that you have deposed, hmm. you're taking care of the possibility yeah. of violence hmm. and all that. So hmm. it's history repeating itself now. 
because uh, Abacha accused the then Sultan of not respecting him. He will get to events late. Abacha will be making a speech and they will be blowing this Jakakaki, pam, 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 pam. So Abacha will be forced to just watch. So he just told um, the, the state administrator. Yes, the state administrator then that he should give him a query. And then he, 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 the governor of Sokoto at that time, the military administrator of Sokoto at that time, Yakubu Mazu, was then ordered to impeach him, I mean to, to dethrone him. He was banished to Kaduna. Yeah. Okay, from what we are getting, breaking news, okay. Aminu Adubairo yes. is now the new Emir of, of Kano. Kano. Yes. As I, you said, you chose between them. Aminu Adubairo. He was the one who won the contest the, then. The last time. Yes, he As was the one who won the contest. So I, was, I expected that they would choose the person who won then. Hmm. Because Aminu Adubairo is very popular with the uh, young people, yeah. very popular, and he, he gets involved in sports. He's very popular with the kingmakers. So they've done the right thing. By putting the the a popular person there. Wow, 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 Wally. <laughs> nothing lasts forever. Yeah, nothing by lasts this forever. this money was deposed. Sanusu yes. Lamidu yes. Sanusu was deposed. Yeah. By this evening now, Aminu Adobairo yeah. is now the Sultan, new Sultan. Yes, and his father had a glorious reign. You know, mm -hmm. uh, was one of the most influential ones, most, most respected. respected. Emma, who ruled from 1963 until his death. So I think. Uh, this is something a lot of people in Kano will like. It's the beginning of a new era hmm. in Kano. Hmm. We'll be on that story. Uh, we'll be on that story. Or maybe by tomorrow, we can, we'll give you new developments from Kano. Now, moving on now. An enemy within is a difficult one to defeat. After alleging that some governors and a minister are behind the plot to house him from the office, the battle national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Adam Soshomole, is having is saving grace from some state governors too. They are making moves including a planned pally with Mr. President to save Oshomole. But the APC Deputy National Secretary insists Oshomole remains suspended. It's a daily ding-dong um, mm -hmm. affairs <laughs> within yeah, the Upper Congress, Congress. Honestly, somebody was analyzing it to me. He said there are 21 members of the NWC mm -hmm. that 15 with Adams Oshomole Five are against him. The governors with the, the number are growing, those against him growing by the day. Mm -hmm. And we don't have, you know, the exact figure. But it will be 8 10. Mm -hmm. as, as I'm saying, that some powers that be within the All Progressive Congress, they seem determined to still hold on to Adams Ali Oshomole. Yes, it's, um, I think there's, there's a good signal from the president. You know, I, I said on Friday that a governor told me that the president had um, decided to set up a team that would mediate in the crisis, a team of governors to reach out to other governors and try to settle the, uh, the dispute. The implication uh, of that is that the settling the dispute, Oshomole will still be on the seat. Yes, the, it's clear that the president still believes in Oshomole. Wow. He still believes in him at least up to today. Otherwise, he will just do his uh, normal sit down look and watch things de degenerate. But by <laughs> by getting, <laughs> that's true now, the president it's normal. Can, that's his, can be aloof. That is uh, default mode. Yes, so he <laughs> can choose to be aloof when he likes. So mm -hmm. by getting one of those governors, one of the Northwest governors, mm -hmm. to mediate on to reach this matter, to reach out to his colleagues and try to solve this problem, it shows that the president does not think that it's time for Shomole to, to go. go. The, the, the president is respected. So if I believe that this whole thing, the president can bring it to an end. Mm. All it takes is just call these people. Okay. But he the always likes to meeting. sit mm. on defense. Mm. Mm. Look at even when there was, there was this tussle for the National Assembly top job. I'm very he refused to come out to say he was supporting anybody. Mm. And, and all of them were mentioning his name. They will say, oh, the president is support. Look at even Kabiru Marafa, when they had the crisis in, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, Zafara, and the court ruled that uh, PDP, APC should not feel candidate. Kabiru Marafa went on a TV station to say that he, the president was happy with the action that he took. Ah. How can I said, how, what kind of man is this? How can the president be happy that his own party, party is losing will not be allowed to take part in an election? It's because the president doesn't talk 
on matters like this. So people now will lie against him. You know, say all kinds of things. Oh, that body language of his is, is supporting us. People can choose to read the body language the way they like. So the point that I'm making is that the crisis is not good for the party. And the president, as the leader of the party, can call, he knows the people who are, who are behind all of this. Yes, you give him Baba Kondé a job to do. But even you, if you call them, you have the stamina, uh, the stature. Mm. You have the power. If you call them and you tell so them, you everybody to line. You whip everybody into line. Or person just used to do it. And you will get the result. So I believe now that this thing, for now, for now, Shomole is waxing stronger because even the Forum of uh, State Party Chairman. They said today that look, um, Oshomole is their chairman, and they appeal to the people who want to kick him into touch <laughs> to uh, embrace uh, reconciliation moves that Baba Konde uh, and the president uh, have uh, begun. So we just hope that okay, as the days go by, peace will be restored to the party. <laughs> but you and I know. That's that when it comes to the crisis in the Doste, for example, yeah. they've all they've made up their minds yeah. to not forgive one another. Yeah. They've made up their minds to not allow any form of reconciliation. Yeah. Because when you hear Philip Shaibu saying that Oshomole should apologize mm -hmm. before any form of reconciliation can take place, you know it's difficult for Oshomole to go apologize to his children. To his children. <laughs> now, what did he do that you apologize? Yes. Shomole himself is a problem. It's a problem that you, we can only pray for him to defeat himself <laughs> so that he will cease to be the problem that he is even to himself. <laughs> but we can't say that he should go and apologize to people like Philip Shaibu now. It makes no sense. <laughs> so it's other people who call them together and try to resolve uh, the thing. But it looks, <laughs> with this uh, Benin people, it looks you know, most unlikely. Uh, yeah, yeah, today I read a press um, statement from Lagos APC, signed by uh, Cheryl Ladejo, uh, the spokesperson, saying that the Lagos APC stands behind Oshomole. And my simple calculation, I can tell you that the big man of Lagos politics, that's Ashwa Jibola Metinbo, that he might still be in support of Adam Oshomole in all yeah. these crisis. Yeah, for me, I, I think it's just rational to allow the current chairman you just had an election, it's not even up to one year. You succeeded in that election, you won more states, more members in the House, in the National Assembly, more members in the House of Rep and the Senate. You know, so for me, they should realize that the, 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 the consequences of having another chairman at this moment will be grave. If it's about 2023, it's still far ahead, it's still about three years ahead. For me, I think, I really don't understand. Well, like we have said, Oshomole has his own weaknesses and all that. But I don't think that, yeah, I mean, I don't think he has committed offenses that are unpardonable. So I think it is better, but, but I, I think the major crisis in this party is the indecision of the president. A mere statement from, from the president, you know, Buhari, that look, this is my position, will make everybody to fall in line. But he has decided not to interfere and the party is, you know, the, the crisis is, is, is getting, you know, the sky is getting deep and, you know, deeper every day. So I think if the president can, even if he cannot call them to just say, look, this is my position, we, we, there's no need to remove the chairman, I think that will have resolved a lot of problems. I think it is more better for them to keep the president, I mean, the chairman of the party. If they remove him now, it's going to affect the policies of the, gov of the government in the eyes of the people. It's going to create a lot of public distrust. And it's even going to distract the government from implementing its policies. And I think as the next election comes, you know, uh, maybe in the next few years, we should realize that what is important now is for the party to carry out its policies in a way that will be acceptable to the people. Once they come with these internal wranglings, you know, the party may end up, uh, you know, um, you know, it, it may, I mean, there may be a big bang in the party mm. that may affect the fortunes of the party in all aspects, especially mm. as the election in Ondo State comes and then the Edo State election is coming in the next few uh, months. So they need to be very careful to manage these guys very well. Jide, when you talk in terms of the likes of the chairman of Governors Forum, that's Kai Rifai, I mean, Governor Nasir Rufai, um, the Minister of Transport, and some other, By that rule, yeah. you know, they, they, they are bent saying that. Oshomole has not 
piloted the affairs of APC very well. And mm. if, uh, one of the, uh, their spokesperson, so to say, the DG of Progressive Governors Forum, mm. when you see everything is listed, you know that it's not possible for a DG mm -hmm. of the Governors Forum mm -hmm. to, be, <laughs> <laughs> to be talking like that. You know mm. that he's speaking their mind. Mm. <laughs> he's speaking the mind of uh, a few of them. Although we must also admit that we've not had Carl Defy me publicly to say that he doesn't want to show money. But we, we've you know, seen his uh, moves. Uh, well, we have <laughs> not seen his moves. You know, he's also a very smart uh, politician. He does not um, put all his cards on the table. Mm. He's, um, he's somebody well schooled in uh, even military tactics. Yeah, yeah. So That's he knows. Yeah, so he knows, he knows. He knows. <laughs> when to really ensure that his flanks are not open. So I won't say something that if I may will tomorrow go and sue me. At, that, uh, Do you uh, have uh, an uh, enemy? At, at, <laughs> did I ever say that? <laughs> and when you even have that, when you have that kind of attitude or disposition, and you can see that there's a need for peace, it becomes easy to easily blend with the other people and make peace, hmm. you know? But it's like what um, um, Shaibu and uh, Obaseki are doing. They're abusing the man every, at every opportunity. every opportunity. But we've not had Kadefai <laughs> me abuse him. We've not had the, the man with the funny beard from Jigawa State, mm. Badaru. Oh. We've not had him abuse uh, Oshomole. Oshomole. So they are all, or even uh, the man with the facial mark from Kebi. We, we, we are told that they are part of the group who do not want Oshomole. But they are not saying it publicly. <laughs> But so their own chairman, we've seen their chairman come out in the open to say we don't want to show money. Yes, the states, their state, mm. state chapter of their, their, their party, mm. the party. So we know that yes, they, they could be the ones, you know, uh, using the remote control. But in this case, they've not come out in the open, and I think that the opportunity for reconciliation is still there, which is what the party should continue to explore, uh, explore. and is the president who has to lead the way. Mm. This uh, aloofness in matters that concern your party should stop. Mr. President should stop the aloofness. Get involved directly and put an end to this, uh, to this crisis. If you have the capacity to put an end to it, you know, the, the, the Christians will say, God, uh, 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 just speak a word. Mm. Speak a word mm -hmm. and I will be healed. Mm. You know, just the word. <laughs> so... And they will say, oh, and before the word, there was the S, mm. S-W-O-R-D. Mm. S was there before the word. That's the spirit. Mm. You know, I feel like preaching today. Oh God. But <laughs> the truth is, <laughs> Mr. President should speak the word, and everyone will fall in line. You know that, yes, for now the president does not want a change. He's the leader of the party. You know? It's mm. not... Mali, you, your final submission on this? Well, I think people have been using the name of the president to ship... Uh, to scholarship political uh, scores, like the governor of Kaduna State and all that, giving the impression that, you know, the president doesn't want, uh, you know, Chomale. So the president needs to speak out. Let, let us know. You don't know where where he stands. Stands. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You are the one interpreting his body. No, like I'm you. You understand the man more than I shall be. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you, Ali Ali. Thank you for this edition. And um, BQ, it's a new week. Yes. We'll do it together for the rest of this week. <laughs> and that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program on what journalists hang out on our platform showing on the screen. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is journalists hang out at tvcnews.tv. I'm Maya Bye for now and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>